The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFC, has terminated the money laundering case filed against uh, Ayoke, uh, former Director General of Nas National Intelligence Agency, over the discovery of 43 million, uh, 27,000, that's 43 million dollars, 27,000 pounds, and 23 million are in an Ikoi flat. The termination was initiated by the EFC with no objection from the defense team led by Kaidi Ajilo of the Castle of Law Chambers. The case was terminated on national security grounds. Former President Muhammadu Buhari reportedly approved the termination of the case before he left office. It will be recalled that the case was instituted in April 2017 when EFC said it had discovered for $3 million, 27,000 pounds, and 23 million naira stashed in a flat in Osborne Road in Okoye after a tip-off from a whistleblower. So joining us now from Abuja is Kairi Ajilo, doctor, uh, a defense lawyer for IOK, former director general of National Intelligence Agency. Pleasure to have you uh, on the show. You know, uh, can you just um, real quickly, you know, confirm to us the details uh, that the, the DG, the former DG of the NI, have been cleared of the corruption allegations and, and what's the base of this case in the first place? Uh, well, uh, as a lawyer, what what I think I need to I think I need to let you know is right from the beginning, from the onset of this matter, Ambassador Ayoke has already maintained in innocence, and the joy, and my joy, and his joy is that today all the cases against him have been withdrawn, and that one has really means that his innocence is established. How, uh, how so? Can you just give, take us through the details again? How so? What happened? You know, what was the court process and everything? Just take us through the details for the sake of those that are just watching this for the first time. Well, well I, I need to beg you that I must be a bit circumspect, circumspect in the sense that the nature of uh, Ambassador IOK, his office, his station in life, and what he has done, and particularly the institution that he has served it, is more of issue that not everything that one needs to place before the, the public. Because, you know, NIA is a very critical institution, a strategic institution, a security institution in this country that, and, and by the act establishing it, you find out that most of what they are doing if you check the National Security Act, talks about even emphasize the Official Security Act and what must how it must be treated. So because of that, I may not really come fully to say this what it is, but the little that I believe as a lawyer that I know that I believe the law will permit me is that he is being accused that a money was found somewhere, and his position is that he did not do anything wrong. By the nature, by its operation, the, the institution always maintains some safe houses in some areas. And the money that they are talking about belongs to the institution. And where the money is being found is a, a safe area, one of the safe, a, safe houses that belongs to the institution. So the question is, who is taking money? Nobody is taking any money. And that has been the issue. And even know that it got to a point that it nearly brought some clashes be between the institution and the EFCC before some uh, before good reason took over. And brothers, at its seat, the whole thing has gone for so while, but at the end of the day, the writing has been done because it was bef it has been found that all the issue of the acquisition has no basis. And under the issue that for national interest, for the maybe security of the nation, the matter, the, the just man has to just be allowed to be. Oh. And it's being, uh, today, he is innocent, is being established. All right, uh, Dr. Angelo, can you, I know you've said, you know, a few things around the fact that he's been, um, the case has been, um, thrown out, taken out of court is, and he's been, um, he's been allowed to go free. Can you, even though, still provide some specific evidence or perhaps factors that contributed to the decision to clear Ayoke of the corruption charges? Well, to start with, and I think I'm speaking as a lawyer and as, as someone that, you know, our, our, our constitution 
establish that there is presumption of innocence. That's the first thing. Ambassador Yoke is the director general of the NIA, and from nowhere there is this story that money has been found in a house. And his explanation, though he may not be able to come to the public to say it, but his explanation is so clear that yes, this money belonged to the NIA. Where the money has been found is one of the safe houses of NIA. No money is missing. Uh, this money is not my personal property. And that is what it is. And you know, in Nigeria, we seem to, to play sometimes to Gary, and that's why what, one of the unfortunate issues when it comes to trial by media. The media went agog because it's salacious. It's so sweet to, to, it's so sweet to peddle that kind of allegation right, left and right. But he maintained his ground, he maintained his position. And the truth of the matter is that today, the prosecutor and those that believe that investigation investigating it must have found that he has no case to be to answered and based on that the matter is, is withdrawn okay simply what has been the role of the uh, national intelligence agency in all of this and how is ambassador yoke himself uh, handling all of this you know at the personal and professional level Well, you know, uh, I, like I mentioned earlier, the station of Ambassador uh, Ayoke, he is a spy master. He is uh, someone that belongs to international intelligence community, intelligent communities. And when it's come to that, his position is to take it, and particularly being a professional uh, intelligent officer, is to take it as it is. It, like I remember in one of our discussion, he would tell me that kind of thing, well, I'm alive. The, the truth will certainly come 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 we, we, we come one day and i think to me that is what happened so to tell you how he's taking it is to take it as a professional is to take it that there's hazard in this in in, in 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 the profession and i believe that is the way uh, any anybody that find him himself in this kind of thing that's what it will be then mentioning the nia i believe that nia uh, again, m most what they are, they are professional, and it's for them to sit and particularly once they have established that nothing has gone wrong, no crime is committed, is to maintain that and to follow the process to the conclu to conclusion. So, you know, the hitherto sensational way this case was portrayed was done by the EFCC, an authority of government. Is that they did not understand the workings before they went sensational about it, or what really happened? Well, I may not be able to, and that is why one of the reasons about two days or three days ago, I talk in one of the fora that institution, we need to build the institution, not, not an individual. I think the problem with that, I don't want to, I don't think the ESCC has to be indicted. If there's anybody that must take the blame, must be who heads the institution at that time. So are you because saying Magu should take the blame? This is a very simple procedural issue. Are you saying Magu should, well, Magu I mean, should have not, taken I'm, the blame? I, 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 I won't mention them. I won't mention them. But I think what matters most is that because I believe every institution has their own framework, their structural framework, their, their operational standard. And again, don't forget that we always talked about this issue of clashes between the sisters in uh, security agencies. Who knows? Maybe this may be one of the issues. But it's so clear that, that this case is not supposed to be given the kind of sensation that is given. And I must say again, most of the stories sometimes may not even come from the EFCC alone because, you know, in this country, there is always a lot of political issues that many people may not want to may, may, may want to settle and they use any available opportunity to serve to all those political causes. Right. So in terms of political scores being settled, it would still have an impact on the agency itself. So how did the corruption allegations affect the functioning and reputation of the National Intelligence Agency? We've talked about how it affected Ambassador IOK, his personal life, his professional life. In terms of the agency itself, how did he affect it? 
Well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not asked, and I think uh, asked to defend the agency, so I may not know what it is. But one thing is so clear: is this allegation is an allegation, indictment is an indictment. But but it is so clear. That's why I mentioned first that our constitutional presumption of innocence is that is there. Anybody may, rightly or wrongly, accuse of any crime. But what matter most is what happened at the end of the day. Today, the matter is over. Today, the man has been exonerated. Today, the man is working free. Today, he's happy. And the international community and all his friends and associates and professional friends, they are aware that, look, this man is clean. And I think to, to that, that is what is it. And I believe the NIA, nobody accused them. They've already maintained their position that this is what it is. And I don't think there's any indictment on them. And I don't think it will affect them in any way. Okay. Just to be clear, what exactly has happened? When you say the EFCC has cleared Ambassador O.K. of all the uh, allegations, does it mean that the case was instituted, which was withdrawn? Does it mean that the Attorney General entered a knowledge prosecute? Or does it mean that the EFCC in investigating discovered that they could not establish any prima facie uh, case against him and they closed the file. And what's next for him? Because you recall that when the incident occurred, well, uh, to, he left let, Nigeria. Is he back in the country? What's next for him? Well, uh, you know, uh, from the position, I may not know who the, the, what goes on with, with the workings of the ESCC. But with the law, it's so clear by the, uh, the administration of criminal justice and every other law that establishes the EFCC and other law enforcement agencies, that the prosecutor at any time, if they find that that, is, or maybe if they find out that there is no case against anybody, may decide to withdraw it. The prosecutor can do that, and at the same time, the attorney general of the federation or attorney general of the state can issue no lay prosecutor. But in this issue, it is the prosecutor that is the FCC that is elected to do what is right and what is mandatory and what is pre prescribed by our law. So, and I think we should we should we should we should give kudos to them. Then to Ambassador Oki, I believe he has to he is back in the country, and he, he is a free man, and I believe he is he is, he is to just to pieces is do one or two things to pieces to to rejoin his colleagues, to join his family, to join everybody. And even in talking about whether he's out of the country, I don't think that is even the issue because the right from the onset, there's nothing against him. Well, congratulations to Ambassador Ayoke to serve your country so dutifully at the Commonwealth and at the uh, National Intelligence Agency and to be hounded by the same country uh, must be quite an experience. But we we'll congratulate him now that he's in the clear. Thank you, Karia Julo, for joining us. <laughs>